for repairing our cars. What is trial charge? Material is nine pounds four, yes. What's this? 17 pounds five for labor? Why, that's highway robbery. Oh, isn't that just like a customer? You've got to have labor, haven't you? Well, let's see what smiles charge for repairs to the other car. Materials, eight pounds, 15. Labor, 10 pounds, four and six. Hmm, there's a difference. I wonder why smiles charge less for labor for identical work. Well, I use labor, of course, but my men use the right tools. I wonder why there is that difference. Tools, huh. Tools save workmen time and you money. How do you set about removing an engine at your place? Ah, now that's where I score. <laughs> uh, Maybe a tough job, but I have a mechanic specially chosen for his brawn. No need for special tools and equipment. The boy's only too glad to put a rope around his neck. And that way he gets a good grip. Then, with everything ready, just yanks the engine right out. strike some little snag. These jobs can be bewitched at times, even for a craftsman like my fella. But he can always shout for help. George, a cherry call, and a mate nips over. Uh, uh, nips over. Well, uh, comes across to him. And of course, it's taken a man off another job, but it's only a matter of a few moments. When two men can work so smoothly together, it cuts out the need for expensive equipment. When you see the job being tackled their way, four strong hands on the job, not counting the boys, you'd agree that hoists and all that fancy tackle only clutter up the workshop, make the place look untidy. And as for special engine stands, <laughs> they're the same. What's a bench for, or an old box? Well, all I know is that in a properly laid out workshop, an engine stand is a first requirement. It's neat and tidy. When an engine has to be lifted out of the frame, a proper hoist makes the job easy and quick. If you could only see the comparison with your methods, Contraptions, my dear fella. You should see my big chap whip off a crankshaft gear. Good, hefty blows on the drift with a hammer. And if that hammer isn't big enough, use a bigger one. And we don't trouble to keep our tools racked or anything like that, just so long as they're handy. Bit crude, isn't it? Supposing he misses. Well, what's a bruise to a fellow like that? Anyway, I don't know why crankshaft gear should be so, well, uh, so awkward. Manufacturers ought to redesign them. How do you go about cleaning parts? Well, now, I've got a simple degreasing plant. The parts are taken into this and thoroughly cleaned before the mechanic is ready for them. Now, take removing a torque tube sleeve. Simple job, but it's having the right tool that makes it simple. And the part isn't damaged when it comes out to be degreased. I suppose you've got a degreaser? The boy's a degreaser. I think I pay him for all this. I mean, uh, it gives him something to do while the fitter's using his superior strength and experience. Enables him to study the component parts. You'd scarcely believe the amount of dirt that boy can find. No machine could do it. Thank you. 
Mind you, he might have to wait patiently a bit while the fitter gets the parts off. Parts don't always fly off, you know. But the boy, meanwhile, is constantly taking something in. He doesn't have to wait long while the man slips the, uh, extracts the uh, talk tube sleeve. And uh, while he's waiting, he can carry out his own little experiments. Of course, talk tube sleeves are difficult. We uh, usually find it advisable to <coughs> renew that part. But it's at reassembling that the nimble fingers of a youngster are most useful. While the man does the heavy work, the boy does the simpler jobs. That's how the man learned. The boy has a chance to watch and learn one particular way of doing a job while practicing another. Practice makes perfect, I always say. And there's nothing like giving young people a thorough training. Meanwhile, he sees how a fragile part is nursed gently into place. He'll use the same methods himself someday, acquire the same delicate touch and cunning practice. And if things do go a bit wrong, well... <laughs> almost like father and son, as you might say. And at the earliest opportunity, the man will teach him something else. Well, I believe in training the youngsters all right and allowing them to help in reassembling, but one of the first things they learn in my shop is to save time and temper by using the right tools for the job. I do my part in providing the tools and seeing that they're kept at hand and properly racked, and I reap the benefit. I don't know why Trials' invoice is higher, but there's only one thing for it. Thank you. 